The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Thank you all so much for joining today. I'm super excited to dive into this topic for, with you all. This is always the best part of the end of the year is thinking ahead to our next year. As we get everyone um, a few minutes to join here, I want to make sure that you're all able to use the question box feature in the GoToWebinar um, interface. So if you could all type into the question box, which I'll be able to see, you know, where you're calling in from today. I always love to see how these webinars bring folks together from different corners of the world. For example, I am located in Boston, Massachusetts. So if anyone here is from the New England area, I'm not too far away from you, but I know we have attendees from all different parts um, of the country, of the continent, of the world on here today. So I'd love for you all to go ahead and put into that question box where you're calling in from, say hello while we let everyone um, get a second to join. So we have Hallie here from Connecticut. Welcome Hallie. William from upstate New York, welcome. Chris from Minneapolis, Minnesota, welcome. We have so many folks getting on here. Gretchen from Richmond, Virginia. Welcome, Gretchen. Ray from Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada. Welcome, Ray. This is great. Eric from Jacksonville. Teresa from Columbus, Ohio. Wonderful. Barbara from Fort Myers, Florida. Welcome. These are flowing in. This is great. It's always so great to see all of your responses in here. Sandy from New Jersey. Welcome, Sandy. Karen from Red Lot, Montana. Welcome, Karen. June from North Carolina. Welcome, June. Aaron from Florida. Welcome. Nancy from Las Vegas. Welcome. Beautiful. Thank you all so much for doing that and sharing where you're from today. It's just really a nice feeling and a great way to start off the webinar to know that we have so many different folks from different corners of the world here. Thank you all again for joining today. Uh, we're going to kick things off with just a few housekeeping items. So just so you all know, this webinar will be recorded. So don't worry about taking notes or anything like that. Um, the webinar will be recorded. You'll be able to access the recording easily on our YouTube channels, on the WordStream and Local IQ YouTube channels. We post all of our past webinars on there as well if you want to check them out. But also be sure to check your inbox later today for the materials. You'll get a recap of the webinar and a recording as well in your inbox too. And then as I just had you all practice using the question box in here, um, just keep in mind that you can put in your questions for the Q&A session at the end or go ahead and save them and put those into the Q&A session at the end. If you've attended any of our past webinars, you know we do some really in-depth Q&A sessions. It's one of my favorite parts, so I'm excited to dig into all of your questions today. So for everyone on the call today, some of you might be familiar with Local IQ, some of you might be already working with us, some of you might be totally new and welcome, and others might be working with our sister brands, Reach Local and WordStream. So for everyone on the call today, I wanna to get us all on the same page on who Local IQ is. So Local IQ is a fully integrated marketing platform that pretty much marries proprietary technology and best in class service and expertise to equip your business to handle anything that the digital marketing space throws your way. And just to dive into that a little bit deeper, some of the ways that we help small businesses thrive and grow and agencies as well and all different types of brands, enterprises and things like that is we first use technology at our core. So we do have um, proprietary technology that, you know, leverages AI machine learning to optimize in real time in your accounts constantly. So making sure that you're always maximizing your ROI. We also have easy tools to help save you time and put time back into your data, manage your business or your agency here. And then we also have proven perform, uh, performance results. So we have the data to back those results. We've been in the digital marketing space for over 15 years, which if you think about it, digital marketing has really only been around some odd years that long as well. So we've really been through it all. We've seen all the changes throughout the different platforms and different channels. And we're here to help your business grow and thrive through all of that as the space continues to change. Right, so for all the folks on here today, another thing that I often get asked in these webinars is where can you learn more about us? Where can you learn more about the topics that we discuss? How can you find out about future webinars, things like that? Please feel free to check out our websites and our blogs on the Local IQ or WordStream website. 
Also be sure to follow us on social media. You can find the local IQ and WordStream pages on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Follow us, give us a like, like our posts. We post a lot about the topics that, that we discuss here in blog posts and guides and so on. And then we also do share out future webinar dates as well. So if you wanna attend more of these in the future, this is a really easy way to be looped in. So hello everyone, and just a little intro into who I am, this person that's been talking to you for the past couple of minutes to intro you into this webinar. Um, my name is Susie, it's great to meet you all. I'm a content marketing specialist over at Local IQ where I write educational content on everything under the digital marketing sun. And how I came into this role was I actually was formerly a digital marketing consultant over on the WordStream side. So I was working with real businesses in real life, coaching them through all things digital marketing and best practices with that. Um, so I took that you know, real life experience and applied it to the educational content that I write today. Um, a fun fact about me is I am based out of Boston, Massachusetts, like I said, and we're fast approaching my favorite season, which is the winter. I love to go snowboarding on the weekends when I'm not at work. So uh, that's just a little bit about me. Be sure to follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter as well, if you'd like. I do share out a lot of the local IQ events and um, resources that we put out there. So a quick intro into what we're gonna be talking about today. We're definitely going to go through, of course, those hot trends and predictions, the exclusive data that we have at hand to really understand how we're you know, going to navigate this upcoming year in the digital marketing space. Uh, we're also gonna call out some of the industries and changes that we've seen that are most notable. Um, we're also going to take that data and then apply it to the why and how of your planning. So we know all these trends and all this data that we're gonna go through, but how does that really impact how you're going to approach your digital marketing in the coming year? So we're going to kind of put that into perspective with those sections. And then, of course, lastly, I love some thought starters, some key takeaways to, you know, keep moving through your digital marketing journey with. And then also, of course, the question and answer session at the end always is a really great um, experience with all of you. So please stay on for that and be sure to put in your questions. All right, so if you've attended any of our past webinars, you know I love to keep our attendees on their toes. So I'm going to switch things up with a little pop quiz here. Please type into the question box, you know, what are some of the trends you've noticed or any predictions that you might have for search marketing in 2023? I'm really curious to know, you know, what people are thinking, what their experiences have been so far. If I'm wondering if we're all on the same page on what to expect in the coming year. So I'm gonna hop into the question box here and see some of your responses call those out. Um, for example, I'll give an example of one of my key predictions. Now I am a little biased because I have gone through all of the data as well, but even just from a surface level lens, I definitely think that we're not going to stop seeing all of these platform changes that we continue to see. There's been a ton of updates thrown at us over the last year or two in um, the space of Google ads, Microsoft ads. So I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Um, so let's see here. Some folks are saying, Michael said interactive marketing. I definitely think that'll be part of the search as well, the search experience as well. Kelsey said that search terms might be getting longer and more specific. I definitely think that will be the case too. Um, Cami said more video and video content. Caitlin also said the same thing. So maybe some more video content being rolled into search or into the digital marketing experience as well. Um, Danielle called out that social media will also be changing. Definitely great call out there. Um, Patrick said sales are going to slow down. I sure hope that we don't see sales slow down across businesses. I always want to see you guys thrive. So we're going to talk about some of that today as well. Andrea had a great call out here too. More restrictions on privacy and working around that on platforms. I'm sure a lot of you on here today might be in some of those industries that get hit with a lot of policies um, on the Google ads and Microsoft ads interface. Um, you know, it, a lot of industries get it from healthcare to education to employment, things like that are some of the main ones that end up getting a lot of those. So definitely good call out there. Um, and we'll talk about, we can always talk about how to work around those. Um, we have some great resources on that as well. Wow, tons and tons of in, info here. Let's see. Great, great answers here. Christy said more local results. Definitely local marketing is going to be another key driver for businesses as well. Um, Janine called out AI. Chris called out some of the old school marketing tactics coming back into play. I definitely think that'll be um, a key trend as well. So thank you all so much for 
you know, calling these out. This was an amazing just little little pop quiz session to, you know, warm you guys up into this topic here. So let's first break down some of the data that um, we wanted to discuss with you all today from our exclusive study that we did here at Local IQ with our partners at, over at WordStream and Reach Local. So just so that we're all on the same page on the data that I'm going to discuss in the next couple of slides, a quick breakdown on our benchmark study that we release regularly, so definitely check that out. Um, over 18,000 um, North American-based local IQ campaigns were incorporated into this um, study. So with that being said, there's multiple campaign cycles going on with these. So that's actually over 80,000 different campaign cycles that we've studied and gone through. We also have 23 key different industries that we ad identified. And for each of the industries that we included into this webinar and into the study, um, we made sure that they had a minimum of 72 unique campaigns so that there was enough data for us to really have numbers that speak for themselves. Um, also, for any of the averages that I'll discuss in this webinar, uh, keep in mind that the averages are technically median figures to uh, account for any um, outliers within the data points. And then also any of the um, metrics that you'll see in the report, if you end up hopping over to our report slide um, and our report pages over on our websites, um, they're all in US dollars, but just know that we don't just work with um, folks in the US, we work with businesses all around the world. So uh, for the purposes of this study, we did put them in USD, but of course um, that's not, you can still apply the same types of concepts even if you're not working in that currency. So some trends and predictions for 2023. I love to start first with the two kind of money metrics that I think is at the top of every business owner's mind is um, cost per lead because I'm trying to get the most bang for my buck when I'm on search marketing. And then also of course, conversion rate. So how many conversions am I bringing in? And these two metrics, keep in mind, have a really interesting relationship with one, one another where they can um, impact one another. So of course, if your conversion rate is going to go up, then yeah, you're going to see your CPL go down. Um, or if you see your CPL going up, odds are you're probably not pulling in as many conversions. Now that might not always be the case, depending on things like cost per click, which we'll get into and things like that. But just kind of to put into perspective why I paired these two metrics together. So CPL, or cost per lead, as we call it here, might also be known to you folks as cost per conversion, cost per acquisition, cost per action. I always joke that cost per click was already taken. So instead of calling it cost per conversion, they called it CPL or CPA. So um, many folks call it different things, which is why I like to call it out just to get us all on the same page. But it's basically just going, coming down to how many actions you're actually sourcing out of your search ads um divided by you know of course the amount that you're actually spending on it so across all 23 industries that we dug into we saw a 19 percent average increase year over year in cost per lead um, so that of course impacted again 91 percent of the industries that we looked at so the majority of the folks on this call today are likely going to see an increase in cost per lead or cost per conversion whatever you would prefer to call it um, in your search marketing in 2023 so definitely keep that in mind. You might see the cost go up there. I'm happy to talk about, you know, what that might mean and, you know, what that's going to, how that's going to impact you, how you can work around that. I think a lot of folks do get, get stuck on this metric a lot and, and feel like if the cost of the leads are going up on search, it's hard to find the ROI there. But there's so many more metrics, and this is why we're going through this today, that also matter and impact to your overall bottom line goals. So um, yes, cost per lead might be going up, but for example, they might be more quality leads. You might be have, seeing a higher conversion rate over time. There's other things that are going to factor into this, so just keep that in mind. I know that sounds a little scary looking at this slide, but um, other things that I think help put it into perspective here is for years in comparison, we it's not out of the norm to see a kind of a, a little bit of an increase on CPL. For example, we saw an increase last year only by 5%, but in comparison back in 2019, we saw an increase of actually 21%, which was even higher. So it really does ebb and flow year over year. So it might look like a really, really rough number as you're looking at it for the increase. But when you put it into perspective, like, oh, it changes, you know, by 10, 20% every year, then that's not you know, a huge major change, but just something to keep in mind. 
Meanwhile, over on conversion rate, so conversion rate is, of course, how frequently you're pulling in conversions in comparison to your clicks and impressions and so on. So um, you might see that abbreviated as CVR throughout um, different marketing materials. Um, but basically what we saw in conversion rate, and this kind of makes sense with the other trends that we're starting to see here, is actually a decrease in conversion rate year over year by 14%. So that also impacted 21 out of the 23 industries we looked at. Um, and again, to put it into comparison, um, it also decreased back in 2019 by 12%. So there has been a consistent decrease year over year. Now, does that mean that folks are just generally not converting as much as they used to? No, I think what that really does indicate is that the buyer's journey is going to be changing. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but just because conversion rate might be going down, doesn't mean you're not pulling in the same number of conversions as you once were. You probably are likely serving a little bit more, pulling in some more clicks, pulling in some more impressions, and people are coming back multiple times before they actually convert. And I think that speaks um, for itself for a lot of businesses. When you have a longer sales cycle or something that might take a consumer a little bit more time to actually consider before they you know, complete an action on your site, whether it be to complete a form, to make a purchase, whatever it is, um, you know, that might take a few visits. It might take a little bit of time. And then yes, that's going to impact your overall metrics and your conversion rate. And as we see here, if conversion rate is decreasing generally across multiple industries, then obviously CPL is going to go up. So we're kind of seeing a, a balanced out trend here. Um, and we'll talk more about how to work through that. Some of the other key metrics that I want to call out here for um, our benchmarks is the cost per click and click through rate. So I paired the two click metric, click based metrics together here as well. Um, CPC is pretty basic. Most folks are um, familiar with that. That's of course, you know, basically your bang for your buck, but when it comes to clicks, not necessarily conversion. So it's how many clicks you're pulling in in comparison to your spend. Um, and not a huge change on both these click-based metrics here. So we're seeing a 2% average increase in cost per click year over year. So that only actually impacted about half of the industries we went through, about 57% of them. Um, so some industries actually saw a decrease. Uh, some industries to call out that did see a decrease in cost per click are um, health and beauty, um, arts and entertainment, and that's gonna follow suit with some of the trends we're seeing where things are, we're recovering from COVID still, over the past few years. So people are still going back out, starting to um, go visit those local types of businesses in person again um, and searching for those. So you know, obviously if there's you know more searches going on, um, more that you can get out of the, your Google ads, you'll end up seeing a trend where you're actually seeing a decrease in CPC. So that's some, some of the industries that weren't affected by this, um, but many industries did see an increase, for example, legal and, um, and things like that, industrial, B2B, those types of industries tend to see a consistent increase as well. And those types of industries that I just called out are gonna see those same trends for CPL, right? Because if your cost per click is going up, odds are your CPL is going up as well because it's costing you more to get somebody to your site to actually convert. Um, so again, in comparison, these changes aren't that out of the ordinary. So it actually decreased a little bit the last couple of years. So um, you know, based on the odds of the trends, your odds are you're probably going to see a little bit of an increase overall this year. Um, and nothing compared to what we saw in 2019. 2019, apparently a pretty rough year when it comes to um, advertising because there was a big increase back in, in that um, year as well. So for click-through rate, um, we're looking at, you know, how that average change year over year was impacted. So 78% of industries actually did see an increase in click-through rate. So that's, of course, the number of clicks that you're getting, um, you know, compared to the number of impressions that you have. And um, it actually didn't really change much. So first time since 2019 that it actually has not changed. So you should see the same general trends in the amount of clicks that you're getting to your site. So for some of the key trends here, I know I called out some of those as we were looking at the numbers, but just keep in mind that costs are definitely rising on, in terms of clicks and, and conversions. So as costs have increased, I know I kind of mentioned some of the economic factors that would play put into play here, like COVID-19, um, supply chain issues, any other like sort of um, general waves in the search patterns of the general public, I think also impact that, um, the spending habits of folks. So um, that's going to continue to ebb and flow, you know, just because 
you know, we kind of call some of that out here. It doesn't mean that it's not going to go down, that it's not going to change. Um, and we're going to talk through some of that as well. Conversion paths are definitely changing. Since click-through rates and conversion rates are kind of changing, maybe going down a little bit, like I mentioned, it's taking people a little bit more time to actually come back to your site and convert. So I think having a cross-channel st strategy to supplement your search marketing is really going to make a difference here. And also, lastly, um, we saw with the rising in costs, another thing that can impact the rise in costs is, of course, competition. Um, since the search ad space continues to be fiercely competitive, um, because everyone knows it has such a high success rate um, and it's super high intent marketing wise, um, more folks are on there. So odds are, if you're not on there yet, your competitors are definitely on there. So you want to be on there and have a you know really well planned out strategy for 2023. So let's dig into how you can apply these trends to your actual planning and the why and how behind this. So why you should be looking at your 2023 search marketing planning now is it's super important um, because one, you know your competitors are on there, so you want to have a straightened out strategy for that. But also two, you want to be able to reap all these great benefits of search marketing. For example, search marketing averages like a 200% ROI, which is really, really good. Um, also, um, it can increase search search marketing and brand awareness can be increased by 80% using search marketing. So um, if you really want to reap the benefits there, you need to have a really tightened up strategy. Um, and you're not the only one out there that's going to amp up their 2023 strategy. Um, you're not alone in this. 63% of businesses have increased their budgets overall. So likely they're increasing their search marketing budgets as well. Um, and again, we saw a 15% growth rate in budget spending. Um, across all businesses just in this past year. So um, budget businesses are adding to their budgets for the following year, and they've also been spending more in the past year. So that's why we're seeing more and more competitive search marketing space. Um, a few other stats that I like to call out, and this is from our act, actually our 2023 planning guide that is going to release this week. So definitely keep your eyes out on our website for that. 86% um, of people say that PPC ads make it easy to find what they're looking for. If they're looking to make a purchase, looking for a certain business and so on. So you wanna be up there, you wanna be showing, you wanna be at the top of the pack to attract the majority of your customers that are looking for your business online. Um, and with that too, um, of course, we always love to refer back to this um, data point. And I think some of you might be familiar with this. It's definitely no secret that 93% of online experiences begin on a search engine. And actually, I love to bring this up because I bet if I asked you all in the chat right now how you would find out about information about a business, it wouldn't be through a phone book or calling up and asking a friend. It would be going on Google or going on Bing or Microsoft search and looking up a business um, or searching a search term. So we know as consumers that we're searching all day, all night, always online. Um, and so we can apply that experience ourselves to the marketing plans that we Im implement for our business. So you know you want to, to iron out a really strong search strategy because of those data points. You want to reap those benefits. So where do you start? Um, a few pointers that I would definitely call out here. Monthly schedules. So it can be really overwhelming and daunting to start your 2023 marketing planning um, and looking at the whole year ahead. When you're in December, you're in the middle of the holidays, everything else is kind of going and whirling around around you and you're trying to understand what your not only what your plan is for next week or next month, but for the whole upcoming year. So breaking it down into smaller uh, more bite-sized pieces of your planning is going to make it much, much easier. So if you break it down month by month, you know, what types of ads you're going to be looking to serve, what types of budgets you're going to be looking to have, uh, what types of initiatives or promotions you might be running, that can all impact how you're going to shape up your search marketing. So I would definitely um, recommend leveraging whether, whatever it makes the most sense for you. So whether that be a free marketing planning calendar, whether that be your own calendar, um, whether it be you know anything in between that's going to help you just write out and get something on the paper that's breaking down your search marketing plans month by month. 
So that'll make it much easier to plan for the whole year. And then you'll have a big picture view of the whole year broken down um, by month. You also want to consider some seasonality here, right? So um, if you know that you're going to pre-plan some of your search marketing now, um, you might put a reminder into your calendar, into your schedule. Okay, I'm running, you know, this type of search ad now for the holidays, but after once the springtime comes around, I'm going to want to switch the copy or switch, you know, whatever is going to be relevant to my audience, right? My audience might care or prefer a certain type of ad copy in my search ads or my display ads or whatever it may be now, but definitely down the line as things change, um, you know, throughout the seasons with holidays and different things going on throughout the year, um, they're definitely going to be looking for something different. And then also be sure to establish your goals beforehand. I always dig into this point so, so much when we go through our webinars because it's it's just so important. Your goals are at the core of everything you do in marketing, but even more so when it comes to search marketing. And that's because they also help you to understand your expectations and how to accurately and correctly measure um, your search marketing. So for example, um, if you know that you want to um, increase your impressions or your website traffic, for example, um, you need a really clear way to measure that. You're not just going to say, all right, I want to put search ads out there to increase my website traffic. You want something much more tangible that you know you can actually hold yourself accountable to down the line. I know that I want to increase my website traffic by this percent or this much by this date. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to implement these keywords um, with this search ad and, and so on. So those are some of the things you want to keep in mind. Um, and that also helps you understand your expectations as well, right? So if I have my goal set up, I know what I'm expecting out of it. And I know what, what might be realistic for my business. So here's an example of a planning calendar that can help you um, out. This is again, the marketing planning calendar that I mentioned today that just got recently is going to be released. Um, and of course we have the calendar here where you could write in you know, any times that you might need to change your search marketing, how your search marketing is going to interact with other um, channels. For example, we give you ideas for email and social. So this is just an example of one free resource you could use. Again, it's really up to you, whatever you prefer. But I felt like this was a good call out and a good example of what I was talking about when I meant you need to really schedule and plan ahead um, for the whole year, um, month by month. Great, so some of the key components that are gonna go into your planning, you have an idea of how you wanna start, but really the three main things that you wanna keep as like pillars throughout your process are the budgets that you're going to be implementing on your search marketing, the channels that you're going to be using to supplement your search marketing, because you wanna do a holistic view of your overall marketing here, and then also how you're going to track and hold yourself, like I said, accountable for um, your search marketing. So, you know, obviously your budget is going to impact how much or how little you're able to do on Google ads or Microsoft ads and so on. But it also gives you an idea of, you know, your pacing, right? So if I have a huge budget, you know, it might not necessarily make sense to toss all of that budget into my search marketing in one month or in this time frame or at this specific ad. I might want to be a little bit more strategic. So once you have your budget ironed out and I'm going to walk through that. Um, you'll have a better idea of how your strategy should really be built out. And then I know this is, of course, a search marketing specific to topic that we're working through today, but I really want to reinforce the idea of a cross channel strategy. While search marketing is the pillar or the core of any digital marketing strategy for any type of business, you also need to be thinking about those other channels and considering those other channels that are going to help grow your search marketing. For example, if you're running branded search ads, you're and but you don't have a ton of brand awareness, odds are people aren't going to be actively going to Google and searching your brand name. So you need to build that brand awareness other ways, maybe through um, social ads or social organic social posts, for example, they see your brand scrolling through social media and then they go on to Google to learn more about your business later. And that's how you'll trigger those branded searches. That's just one example, but really, truly, um, other channels can impact your search marketing in so many other ways. Another example would be email marketing. Of course, if you're running search marketing, you're going to need some way to nurture the folks that you actually pull in through your search ads. 
So having your email marketing cohesive with your search marketing is gonna make your life a lot easier. For example, if you're promoting one thing on your search ads, your email marketing should absolutely say the same thing. And then lastly, I know this is a real struggle for a lot of businesses out there, but tracking. Um, getting your tracking ironed out first is so important because you don't wanna be left guessing um, what your metrics are, what your performance looks like. So getting your tracking ironed out first will really help you be confident in the results that you're getting and be confident in the data back decisions that you do end up making around your overall um, strategy and optimization tweaks that you'll be doing in your accounts. Um, so identifying what success looks like and how exactly you're going to measure that is really important. Um, and we'll dig into that a little bit too. So let's start with goals. I know this is something I kind of walked through a little bit already, but like I said, I really wanted to reinforce the idea of goals here today because goals are so, so important, not only for understanding your strategy and knowing what to do next, but like I said, also setting those expectations that are realistic, right? So I know I gave some examples, but of course, I always like to rec recommend to folks using the SMART goal structure, which some of you might be familiar with, but of course that means whatever your key or core objective is with your search ads, um, keeping in mind that they should be specific, measurable, easily measurable. So, so, you know, again, saying instead of just wanting to increase web traffic, wanting to increase website traffic by a specific amount. So that way you have a very specific goal in mind and you have a specific number that you can measure against your with your current um, data. And then also making it achievable too. Uh, this one in the middle is, I think, honestly, maybe the most important of the SMART goals because it can really, this is what would impact your expectations, right? So if I want to get 100 clicks a day, but I only have a $10 daily budget for my search ads and my average cost per click is a dollar, I'm going to have a really hard time hitting my goal of getting 100 clicks a day. It's just not realistic with my budget which is fine. I'm not saying, you know, I understand it's not always feasible to dump more budget into a search marketing campaign, but you need to just scale back your expectations, scale back your goals and work towards those larger goals over time. So if you can only afford one click a day or 10 clicks a day with your daily budget, totally fine. Set that as your goal first and work towards that. And as you grow more clicks over time and you're getting more historical data, your ads start performing a little bit better, you start ranking a little bit better, over time you can work towards, you know, putting more budget in as you get more leads, conversions, and so on um, to end up working towards those larger goals. So really just being realistic and knowing what's achievable I think is really important and that's going to tie in majorly to your budget um, and your overall strategy as well. And then also too, I think I kind of touched on this a little bit when I talked about how your other channels should reflect what you're promoting in your search marketing but also making sure it's relevant. So if I said I wanted to increase my website traffic, you know, why might that be? Do I have a new promotion that I'm putting on my website? Do I have a specific um, lead generation tactic that I have on that website that I want people to access? You know, thinking about that and making sure that it's relevant to what I'm actually working towards with my search ads and advertising, quite frankly, in my ad copy, I think is really important. Um, so again, if you're just, you know, looking to push your website traffic, um, just to push website traffic, that's not really relevant to your business. Maybe you need brand awareness and then you might be focusing on impressions. So really keep an open mind when it comes to search marketing. I think that's that's so, so important. And then lastly, of course, holding yourself to a specific time frame within your search marketing is also going to really help you understand your goals, measure them, and also hold yourself accountable. So for example, you know, getting a, trying to work towards something within a specific time frame is going to be much have have a much higher likelihood of actually getting achieved. So making sure that you're setting those time frames for yourself, not only to hold yourself accountable, but also to understand how you're pacing, right? So if you just say, all right, I want to increase my website traffic over time, well, then you'll never really know for sure if you're really hitting the goals that you want to. But if you do a regular check-in, you know, two months, six months down the line, you'll have a much better idea of how you're actually pacing towards that goal. So I touched on budget a little bit. Let's go refocus back to those three key components. I wanted to intro the goals first because I want you to be keeping in mind that kind of goal conversation that we just had throughout the rest of this webinar, right? 
So I talked about how budget can impact your goals and your expectations. So here's some of the things that you should be factoring into your search marketing budget. A lot of folks think when they're talking search marketing budgets, you know, just the clean ad spend that you're putting towards clicks um, on your uh, on your account. But there's so much more that is going to cost you when it comes to running Google ads in 2023. For example, and this is a pretty complete list. You might have some of these, you might have all of these, or you might have more and you might have none. But every business instance is going to be unique. But I just want to have you start thinking about for your unique business needs, what it's going to cost you to have a really effective search marketing strategy. That might mean you need a fresh website, right? Because if you could have the strongest search marketing and search ads in the entire world, but if those people click to that website and you're getting tons of clicks and your website isn't up to par and it's hard to convert off it, people are bouncing from your page, you're never gonna see results from that search marketing because you need a really strong website. So again, that's just one example of something that you might wanna be putting some budget towards in order to see um, more eff efficacy out of your search ads. Also um, things like branding, again, making sure your search ads are clean um, and brand and correctly branded with the same type of styling and voice and tone that you would use throughout your website is also really important. Creative for those display ads as well. Um, obviously, of course, we have advertising in here, so you are going to have to put some budget towards Google Ads and Microsoft Ads. I know it's a shame that they don't let us advertise for free. I wish they did, but, um, you know, then again, it would be a totally different space if they did. So keeping in mind that you are going to have to put some hard budget towards your actual ads, too. Um, and then you might be outsourcing um, some of your search ad um, jobs as well. So you know, I think weighing in um, the factors of how much it might cost you to run search ads in-house with an in-house expert that's full-time salary, benefits, and so on, versus, you know, at leveraging a marketing partner that can do all of that for you at a lower cost than it would be for a full-time employee. Those are the things you're going to have to really weigh out. Or, you know, of course, a freelancer and a contractor, those are going to cost some, some money too. So, keeping that in mind, um, you might also be leveraging things like a CRM to funnel through all of those conversions that you're going to get from search as well. So there's a lot in here that's going to go work into your marketing budget um, and work into your advertising budget as well. And that's going to impact, again, your goals, your expectations, all tied together, you guys. So a common question whenever budget comes up is how much should you actually allocate towards your marketing, towards your search marketing, towards your search ads? Um, Everybody is going to say something different. There is no right or wrong answer, sadly. But what we do find is on average, um, most local small growing businesses start off with five to 10% of their revenue going towards marketing. So if search marketing is your only channel, it might be going solely to search marketing, but it's probably also going towards some of those other things that I just mentioned, um, you know, branding, website, um, motions, freelancing, in-house agency type of work. Um, but also, too, for larger businesses that are a little bit more established, you're getting some traction on your marketing. We've seen that go as high as 10 to 12 to even 15 percent in some enterprise cases. So it really is going to depend on, you know, your unique needs. But I think a lot of folks really, really want a solid number to go off of. So I hope this is a helpful guiding light for most of you on this call today. Um, and I did kind of touch on this a little bit, but again, those other channels that we want to keep in mind. So there are other ways that you can supplement your PPC or your search ads here, your pay-per-click marketing. Um, so if you, for example, want to generate more branded searches, you might be running on social um, if you wanted, or on print ads or other types of advertisements and, and organic posts. Um, if you are generating a lot of clicks to your site from your search marketing, you might implement live chat on your site to make sure that the folks that are coming to your site from your search ads that you're paying for are getting a really nice experience once they get, once they get to your website, I think is really important as well. Um, so a lot of other channels to also consider in combination with your search marketing, and this will all help lift your overall search ads. Um, and I think something else to keep in mind with this too, when we're talking multiple channels and search marketing is folks always go, well, why would I run search ads if I'm running SEO and I'm ranking organically? That's a good question. And, 
you know, yes, you might be ranking through SEO, but there are, there's always a chance with SEO since it's such a long-term goal and long-term game with SEO. There's definitely those opportunities where you might not be ranking as high. Of course, you're always going to be below the ad space. And then also too, you know, you want to, you might not be ranking for terms that you could also be bidding on. So I think SEO and PPC really work hand in hand in that way where search ads or search, um, search ads can um, supplement a lot of the organic searches that you might not be fully ranking for yet, or that um, you might want to just supplement and really hit home on if it's really competitive. There's a lot of use cases for that as well. So I think there's a lot of core strategies that people always default to. And a common question I get asked is, all right, which one's the best one? If you had to pick one, you know, I just want to do this one, which one do it? Is it? There really is no right or wrong answer there. There is no one end all be all marketing channel. If it was that easy, it would be a totally different story, right? But it's not. And so with that, we need to be considerate of all the other channels we have out there in combination with our search ads. And lastly, um, definitely keep in mind your reporting and your tracking. So make sure that you have your tracking implemented and tested ahead of time before you put your search ads to the forefront of 2023, right? So you wanna make sure that your tracking is accurate, you know, test your conversion actions, make sure that you're pulling the information that you want into your Google Ads account or your Google Analytics account or so on. Um, of course, at Local IQ, this is just a snippet of a demo account. So um, pay no mind to the data here. It's more just to give a visual of what tracking and reporting could look like in one instance. Um, if you were to use a local IQ resource or solution, of course, it's going to look different for everyone. There is no one end all be all right solution for folks out there. Uh, but this is just one example of how tracking can be implemented for you and easily represented into a easy to navigate report. So making sure that you have those reports in place beforehand, that you feel comfortable with them, that you know that they're accurate is going to be really important when it comes down to time to measure out your actual performance. So a few thought starters that I always like to leave folks with so you have some action items to do as a little homework after he this. Uh, keep in mind a few things here. So yes, search is competitive. And I think that scares a lot of folks away when it comes to search ads, but it is equally as competitive as it is rewarding. So making sure that, um, you know, if your competition is on there, you'll likely want to be on there too, because that means there is opportunity out there that is identified by your competitors that you also want to take advantage of. Uh, so don't let the competition scare you away. I know that it can get very heated. I know that it can get very pricey, but it can be well worth it in the end when you start converting more customers. Also, I kind of touched on this a lot, but a huge theme here is adaptability. If there's one thing that I want you all to take away from this, it's always, always, always have a backup plan you know, be agile and flexible to handle anything that 2023 throws at us. As you can see from some of the trends that I called out today, um, you know, the the changes that we saw occur were pretty major, right? So we're seeing more changes being thrown at us. And I know it's not going to stop. So you can't be married to one set strategy or one set budget. That's just not realistic. Things are going to change. And as the platforms changes, so should your strategy. And that's totally okay and totally normal. Um, also, of course, planning is going to save you from headaches later. You know, taking time now, I know it's hard to, to plan, but just a little bit of time to help, you know, iron out your strategy is going to make things much, much easier in the coming year because you'll already know uh, what you have to do, what to expect um, as you implement these search ads. And last but definitely not least is the rise of technology back solutions and resources and also those additional channels that are now supplementing search. You know, if we think back to the beginning of search ads time, it was really just, that was the one like first real digital marketing channel was Google ads and then of course Microsoft ads. But now we have all these other social media platforms from TikTok to Snapchat to Facebook and Instagram, of course, to email marketing and nurturing through a CRM to, um, live chat, podcast marketing, audio marketing, there's so much out there that can all help grow your core strategy, which is again, going to be your search advertising. Uh, so leveraging that tech, those channels and also that technology, because we're seeing a huge rise in um, artificial intelligence and machine learning in platforms as well. Um, marrying those two together to really get an optimized result for your search and marketing is 
probably going to be your best bet and the way to maximize as much as possible the results that you get from these channels. So with that, we're going to go ahead and launch a quick poll. So if you feel like this was a lot of information, which I definitely understand it was, um, go ahead and click yes in that poll where you'll be able to get personalized, unique advice uh, specific to you and your unique needs in your business. Um, and be sure to you know, check that out and get some answers to your specific needs. So if you feel like you wanna take your marketing to the next level that, this year and want a little bit of help, uh, definitely feel free to go ahead and hit yes in that poll. We're going to keep that poll up for the remainder of the webinar. And we're gonna switch into the audio portion where I just go ahead and go through your questions and answers here today. So I'm going to go ahead and pop out your questions and it seems like there were tons coming in. If you have questions that you were saving, definitely type them in now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and dig through these. There's a ton in here. So for folks still asking if this will be recorded, this definitely is recorded. You'll be able to access the recording easily on our YouTube and on um, in your inbox later on. Um, Dan asked for some clarity on what do we classify as search marketing. So that's, of course, your search ads. Um, search marketing can also be used as an uh, umbrella term. Um, where it could be considered also part of the SEO and advertising PPC strategy. But in this case, we're applying search marketing to the advertising portion of that. So search marketing, I would define as, you know, any time that you want to show your business listed on Google or Microsoft, if somebody looks something up, that would be considered search app marketing. Great questions here. Christy asked a really interesting question um, for some folks that fall into these industries. I think this would be a great talking point here. And definitely, like I said, you all, please feel free to put in more of your questions here for this final you know, few minutes we have here today. I love answering your questions. So as we continue with this audio portion, the poll stays up, definitely put your questions in for this Q&A session. So Christy asked an interesting question here. She wanted to know, what do I think is the best channel or combination of channels for B2B companies uh, and specifically in high tech? Um, for those folks on there that are B2B, um, definitely a tricky question. And I know that B2B is a high stakes, highly competitive industry and a very broad industry, right? There's a lot in there, uh, call out high tech specifically, but there's a lot that could fall into this for search marketing. Um, and I know I said that there is no one end all be all channel. So Christy, I will tell you that right now, to be honest, I can't say that there is one best channel. It's going to really be dependent on your business. Um, but I do think, like I said, search marketing or search advertising is at the core of any of you know, your strategies. So using those channels um, you know, to elevate that channel, to elevate the rest of your channels, I think is going to be really important in B2B, um, especially because odds are for folks to get notice and awareness and pull in those decision makers for b2b they're all they're probably on google searching for you um and then also to other combinations of channels we see a ton of b2b businesses on social media and other channels like that as well uh, so definitely keeping those in mind so mark asked a great question about local iq um, for folks um, interested in this so he asked if Local IQ includes multi-channel marketing. We absolutely do. We do tons of different channels. So uh, really the possibilities are endless. You can do a whole different combination of many different channels. Uh, so the answer is yes. Great questions here. I have a ton more coming in right now. I'm reading them all right now. Alex asked if I would recommend LinkedIn advertising as a marketing channel for B2B. It definitely is an effective channel for some B2B companies, LinkedIn advertising, but I do think it's probably most effective when it's used in combination with other channels. So great question, Alex. Um, some other folks on here asked, a couple of people asked something like this. So um, what would be the most impactful PPC strategy you know, for my unique business, for a startup business? Any of the folks that are asking questions about their specific industry or business, I highly recommend to hit yes in that poll so that you can get a more individualized answer um, while I have to address the group here. But when it comes to PPC strategy, 
it kind of boils down to a lot of concepts that we talked in about in this webinar today. So, you know, making sure that your PPC is goal oriented, budget oriented, and structure and tracking oriented, that's really going to be what sets you up for success. So a lot of people, once we start digging into the um, topic of search advertising, they, you know, get bogged down with some of the different types of strategies like single keyword ad groups versus multiple keywords in an ad group or, you know, goal oriented or smart campaigns versus standard campaigns and things like that. I, there is no right or wrong answer. There's a lot of strong opinions out there on those different strategies, but I think a lot of what will uncover what strategy is best for you is going to come from sourcing, you know, your specific goals, your expectations and your budget. For example, if I know that I don't have a ton of time to put into my marketing, but I have some budget, you know, then I'm probably, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, opt for a standard manually controlled search campaign. I'm probably going to try and outsource my search advertising or potentially, um, you know, input some smart campaigns. Like that is one example of how your strategy is going to change depending on your bandwidth, your budget and your resources. So great questions there. Tons more questions coming in here. Lori has asked, how would you handle the change of the deprecation of third party cookies and data and the changes in data collection with search ads? I know that this impacts search ads very heavily. It's a very hot topic right now. What I would say to folks about the deprecation of third party cookies is definitely keep in mind that third party cookie deprecation actually isn't going into effect until the second half of 2024. So we have a very long time to prepare. So that's number one. Number two, when it comes to third party cookies in your search advertising, is you need to start leveraging other types of strategies and alternatives now so that you can get comfortable instead of relying on third party cookies and then you know being out of luck when they go away in 2024. So one major um, uh, new alternative is of course first party data. So that's the data that your business holds as an organization or you hold as a company. So that's the data that you would collect from like a CRM um, or, you know, for example, look like you can collect that data for you and so on. And that can feed directly into Google to give more acute audience insights using your first party data. So I would highly recommend that um, if you're struggling with navigating third party cookie deprecation. Great questions here. Keep these questions coming in. So a lot of folks are asking how, what percentage of total marketing budget should be allocated towards just search or digital. So when I was using that five to 10% number, that is solely just for digital. So if you have additional um, marketing channels on top of that, um, that is definitely going to add on to how much you're actually gonna be pulling out of revenue for all these other you know, more traditional media channels, whether that be TV, radio, or, or so on. Um, I was really talking about here more like search advertising, SEO, website, um, social, and so on. And there is no right or wrong answer for how much budget you put towards your search marketing specifically out of that percentage. But I would highly, highly recommend going back to what you we were originally talking about with your average costs and your expectations. So do a little bit of keyword research or try testing a few campaigns out on a small, small budget to get, in this, get a sense of what your average cost per click is, how much that's going to cost you over time. That'll help you understand how much minimum budget you really need to hit the goals that you want. So again, if you know on average you're in a really competitive industry and your average CPC is 20, 30 bucks minimum, then you know you're gonna need a pretty hefty budget you know, put towards your search advertising to stay competitive and get the amount of clicks that you want to ultimately get conversions. So I think that's really, really important. There is no amount that you should be putting towards your search advertising. There is no minimum or maximum, but there's definitely a threshold that you'll be able to handle and also bandwidth wise too, right? So if I have a ginormous budget, you know, that's great, but if I don't have the bandwidth to actually put that budget to good use, then I might be ending up wasting spend on a campaign that's not necessarily optimized to its absolute fullest extent. So I think that's also really important to keep in mind too. Um, great questions here. Um, Deb asked a question, third-party cookie deprecation, what was the term? So it's um, 
this is something that's coming not necessarily from me, but the entire general space, what we get from Google on information on this, because uh, this decision was um, brought to forth into the search marketing space from Google. And we have tons of resources on this, so definitely feel free to check out our resources on third party cookie deprecation. But essentially what deprecation means is it's just kind of a fancy way of saying that eventually third party cookies are going to be unavailable for you to use as a business. They're going away. Uh, so um, it's going to happen over time, which is why they're using that term. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be phased out for you know a certain amount of time where they're going to be less and less readily available and less and less at, you know able to have the ability to be used by many different businesses. Um, so that's why it's kind of you know slowly but surely moving on, um, moving on to first party data rather than third party data. Great question, though. Please keep these questions coming in. I know we have only a couple minutes left, so I'll just try and pull one more question out of the tons that you guys sent in. Thank you all for um, sending this in here. Let's see. Tons of questions coming in. All right, so one person, a few people also asked on here um, why search marketing might also be. Um, might be better or worse than you know seo or other strategies it really is going to depend like you don't always have to be running search search advertising if you happen to and this is a rare occurrence but if you have you know a really really great results in um, another channel but it's not that necessarily search advertising is better than other channels but it, it's kind of like a faucet that you turn on right they can't it, you know the leads come in super fast, um, it's super effective, and it's super high intent, right? Because at that point, it's almost in a way, it can work in top of funnel in many different ways, but a lot of the use cases for search ads can be a little bit more bottom of funnel too, because people are more likely, you know, high, high intent keywords that you're bidding on to show for. These people are ready to buy. These people are ready to learn more about your business. They're typing it in manually into the search bar, um, you know, that I think could potentially help uh, push your 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 leads to the next level rather than another channel. So that's why we like to lean into search advertising, but definitely keep your mind open to other channels too. And that's why I say a balance of both is really going to be better. It's not that one is better than the other. Tons of other questions on here. Last question that I'll get to with this last minute from Brandon. Are there any free tools, resources that can help supplement search strategies that come to mind like Google Trends or WordStream's free keyword tool? Absolutely, those two are great to start with. So thank you for calling those out, Brandon. Um, the other you know, resources that I recommend, again, would be like our free marketing guide. Definitely check that out. Um, there's tons of other tools out there. We have a few roundups of free um, search marketing, advertising tools and strategies on our website. So definitely just give that a search on our site. Um, but great call out there. Thank you all so much for joining. This was um, a really in-depth session. I appreciate all your questions. This was great. I wish I could answer all of them. As you can probably tell, I could talk about this all day. I love digital marketing and PPC. So I hope you all learn to love it a little bit more today too. Uh, thank you for joining. Keep your eyes peeled for the recording um, and the materials later. And also keep your eyes peeled for our upcoming webinars in the future. Definitely be sure to join those as well. Uh, I hope you have all have a wonderful day and thank you so much.